Assault Rifles. The classic mid-range all-rounder gun with a perfect balance of fire rate and power. A wonderfully versatile weapon type which you can use to excel in pretty much all combat scenarios in Cyberpunk 2077. Whether it's attaching silencers for stealthy espionage, glass cannoning with well-placed and Everston assisted shots, or charging guns blazing through the front door like a berserker. These guns have you covered. But as usual in this game, CD Projekt Red have gifted us a nice range of these weapons to choose from, with different ARs excelling in various combat scenarios. So today, let's break down all 11 assault rifles in Cyberpunk 2077 before deciding once and for all which is best. Let's get into it. As usual, with these weapon ranking videos, I need a build which both utilises and balances all the assault rifles, so that I can test them on a decent but also level playing field. Therefore, I've bought up 20 reflexes with many many perk points sunk into the assault tree for obvious reasons, as well as cool, since cold blood is really going to help us with the assault part of these guns and ninjutsu with being stealthy. Finally, we need 18 technical ability as always with weapons, in order to craft legendary variants and utilise more benefits of smart and power weapons. For cyberware, the main things I'll be making use of today are the GNT Mark IV San Deviston with three heat sinks for low cooldown as well as optical camo which gives us an edge with stealth. Now that you have the context let's get onto the guns. Down at the bottom for me, we have Prejudice, one of Rogue's two iconic weapons, the other being her pistol, Pride. Now honestly, I've been heavily debating whether to rank this gun bottom of the list or top. Let's look at all the reasons it's great. First, it's a variant of Arasaka's Masamune gun, which fires in quick bursts for low recoil and high accuracy. It's great for a Sandeviston build especially since the bullets fire so freaking fast. The best thing about this gun though is the ability for bullets to pierce objects, making this the absolute closest thing to a tech assault assault rifle that this game has to offer. Like seriously, if you want to use assault rifles only in your playthrough, you better get used to never shooting through walls. Because here's the kicker which ruins everything. This gun is only available to use for one mission within one of four main endings you can choose from. What's more, whilst there's a reasonable amount of combat for said ending, it's definitely not the most combat heavy of the four, and I'd guess that there's only about 50 people you get to fight with this gun. Anything you see in the Arasaka compound here is me cheating it in with console commands, just to show it off a bit more. But yes, unless you want to cheat, you cannot get this gun outside of one ending, which I think is a crying shame, as it would otherwise probably be number one. Our next gun doesn't rank low because of some annoying quest issue, but rather because it's just pretty basic. The DA-8 Umbra is what I've taken to call a burner gun, and it gives a new meaning to the phrase fire and forget as well. The game itself describes it as such, claiming you'll replace it as soon as something better comes along. The Umbra isn't a bad gun by any means, hell, it was better than I expected it to be actually. With okay power and a reasonable rate of fire, it definitely got the job done, and is an okay gun for early game. I acquired this epic version from the Second Amendment store near V's apartment building. Just keep waiting and checking the vendor's inventory until a decent one comes up. That being said, there's not really much point buying one to be honest, since they're very common on the streets of Night City. However, this gun does just feel cheap. Right down to the way it fires, it's an intangible thing that I can't quite describe, but it's clunky and you can't attach a scope which immediately compromises its versatility. This thing also burns through bullets, and you'd better make sure you're running over every corpse to try and pick up more ammo, else you're probably gonna run out. Overall, not great, not terrible. It's a convenience gun, cheap and disposable. Next up is the standard D5 Copperhead, a 30 round auto assault rifle which is also very common on the streets of Night City. The game actually describes this one as the gun which replaced the AK-47, thereby having a wide range of buyers on the market for being an easy to acquire and dependable gun. Now since it's so common, most likely you'll be finding several of these early on in your game, and I wouldn't necessarily pass this one up if ARs are your thing. Whilst there's nothing majorly special about it, it still gets the job done, with the added benefit over the Umbra of having an attachable scope. Equally, you can craft the legendary version with the crafting spec found on Bruce Ward during the suspected crime activity in Rocky Ridge over here in this camp. Personally, I did pretty well off this, gaining a poison damage effect which definitely made this thing perform better in my combat trials. For the most part though, this is just going to recreate that classic feel of an assault rifle. Nostalgic? Sure. Particularly special? Not so much. 
The Kyubi was a nice change of pace when reviewing these weapons, and had a very unique feeling compared to all the others. Whilst the recoil is nice and low, the sound would suggest that this is the love child of an AR and a shotgun, with a single semi-auto shot that feels very powerful backing up that thesis. I was unable to find a legendary variant unfortunately, and online sources weren't entirely accurate. I did however manage to get an epic version from the vendor at the Aldecaldo camp. Comment below if you have found a legendary one, and we'll see if there's any common places for it. Being a semi-auto with high damage output, this feels good to shoot, and is close in a way to a precision rifle, or perhaps the Fazar shotgun. Definitely a gun for berserk users at any rate though, since it didn't pair great with the Sandy. My main gripe with this gun however, much like the Umbra, is the inability to attach a different scope. The one provided is inaccurate as hell compared to the others, with the main problem being how it blends in with the background environment just too well. Not exactly what you want when trying to keep track of a little dot, that's for sure. The Nawaki is the go-to weapon of the Arasaka Special Forces, and after using it a bit for myself, I can see why. The three round burst fire allows for better accuracy, whilst also pairing great with the Sandeviston. And the reload time, for me at least, was non-existent, though bear in mind I've got perks to help that, but it's fast at any rate. It's also a good looking gun, with decent firepower and excellent ricochet. However, for being so widely used, I actually wasn't able to find it at any weapon vendors. Not epic or legendary anyway, as that's all I was looking for. Nor can this gun be crafted? Instead, I looted this epic tier variant off a member of 6th Street in Rancho Coronado for free, and you know what? It's still very decent. Satisfying to operate with a somewhat slow fire rate, but decent recoil and power to make up for it. That being said, this all becomes a little redundant, as there is a very similar gun that's greater still, which we'll get onto in a bit. Our first of two smart assault rifles. The D5 Sidewinder is the evolved variant of the D5 Copperhead. It does exactly what they do, but smarter. Obviously, you're going to have to switch out your ballistic coprocessor for a smart link though, to use this gun to its full potential. A possible drawback for those wanting a build with multiple ARs. Having tested most of the smart guns at this point, I'll start off by saying this certainly isn't one of the best, with Skippy, the Shinjin Mark V prototype and the Bezing Chong all easily beating it. However, that doesn't make it a bad gun. Just not the best. Its low damage with a medium rate of fire makes enemies appear pretty spongy, and playing a pacifist build by turning weapons non-lethal only makes this problem even worse, as the gun won't go for the head. You can get headshots pretty easily with this thing, especially by only placing their head inside the targeting box, but even then, multiple headshots are required for a kill. Then again, let's remember that this is a more common street tier gun of Night City, and actually performs pretty well within that class. I picked up this legendary version from the weapon vendor in Red Peaks, though I probably wouldn't spend out on this gun if I were you. Just find it for free on the street somewhere, craft the epic version, or acquire its superior iconic variant for free, which we'll get to in a bit. Easily one of the most powerful guns on this list, the M251S Ajax is a slow firing but highly damaging gun. At 30 rounds per mag and fully automatic, you can lay into a large group of enemies and take most, if not all of them out without even having to reload. Headshots with this thing were predominantly one shots for me, with glancing body shots still taking at least 25% health. The interchangeable scope is also a huge part of this gun's success for me, as attaching something more long range can turn it into an automatic precision rifle pretty much. Marty Jenklo over in the Biotechnica Flats will sell you the legendary version, but honestly I wouldn't bother buying it, as I found two legendary versions out in the world in my first playthrough, and that must mean they're fairly common. Why waste money on things that you can get for free? Equally, you can acquire a decent rare version of this gun in your flat, if you side with Meredith Stout during the pickup. Yet another benefit to going with her, you know what I'm saying? Now, the only thing I will say against this gun, and it's not a criticism, not really, since melee weapons are the best thing to pair with a Sandero in anyway, but this is no good for Sandy users. It would, however, seriously kick ass in a Berserk build, or function as something of a closer range sniper alongside a Cyberdeck. To sum this gun up, I'd say this. It's more of a learning curve than others perhaps, but once you've mastered it, it's certainly an awesome powerhouse of a gun to use. That's why in World, it's the rifle of choice for soldiers. At number 4 is the iconic variant for the Copperhead. Psalm 11.6 is named after a biblical reference which reads, Let him rain coals on the wicked. Fire and sulphur and a scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. Why is it named after this quote specifically? Well, put plainly, it is a Copperhead with increased damage and the chance to apply a burning effect. The burning decal also heavily lends itself to this aesthetic, and it almost feels like I got a Copperhead and put it through a Pack-a-Punch machine. This gun looks very cool, but there is a catch if you want it for yourself. 
yourself, as you need the right tech perks. Over here in Northside, you can find the crafting spec for this gun during the suspected crime activity, just say no, which is unlocked after completing another suspected crime activity just southwest of this location. Taking out this pesky Sand Everston using Borderlands looking dude, you should find the spec on his body. Whilst not awful, when paired with the Sand Everston, I feel this gun fits more into the Berserk category, what with all the fire and craziness. Equally, it could also be the backup weapon of choice for an incinerate using Netrunner Fire Mage. Divided We Stand is a name which makes me chuckle, since it sums up pretty well the utter backwards idiocy of the 6th Street Gang. You can find this one during the quest Stadium Love, and can either acquire it fairly by winning the competition against the 6th Street Boys, or just walking up and taking it by force. Be warned though, doing the latter will likely result in you having to murder the entire group to death. Besides which, the competition isn't actually that hard, and it's also fun. As I mentioned earlier, this is the iconic and superior variant of the Sidewinder Smart Gun, and boasts one very unique chemical damage bonus. You see, when it comes to smart guns in general, this one still isn't great for targeting, and will very often miss. However, this gun turns that from a small annoyance into a nice benefit, since bullets that miss will very often explode into biohazard clouds. These will deal a small amount of extra chemical damage to anybody unlucky enough to be caught in the fumes. Pair this with the gun's ability to target five enemies at once, as well as the basic chemical damage inflicted by bullets which do hit, and you're kind of looking at a more hands-on equivalent of the Contagion Quick Hack. Granted, Contagion is still more effective and less effortful, probably, simply due to how powerful quick hacks are in this game, but for anybody who still wants to use guns, this definitely has the best of both worlds. In second place is our iconic variant to the Ajax. The Moron Labe takes that excellent powerful gun and actually fixes one of the bigger problems I had with it, that being fire rate. With this becoming slightly increased, the gun becomes a lot more versatile all round, now functioning a bit better with the Sand Everston if you really wanted to use that combination, but also just taking out hordes of enemies with all that power even faster. Add on top of this the chance to brutally dismember people, and you're looking at something described as a weapon for an alpha among alphas. Wonder who that can be in reference to? Well, by looking at the artwork and colour scheme, we can see a black and white skull. Comment below what you think, but I'm personally taking this as a Punisher reference, with the power packed behind this gun more than enough to fulfil Frank Castle's one-shot, one-kill mantra. Chucking a silencer on this thing and turning invisible, I even found this gun excellent for sneaking around, with its power again able to take out my foes with one headshot each. What lost it first place for me though was when I tried to further my stealthy endeavours by firing from a distance. Unfortunately, the damage seriously diminished from this far away, and I realised I couldn't actually use this gun at long ranges. A shame, yes, but I guess ARs aren't really built for that type of thing, and I'll just have to pack Overwatch or Widowmaker as well next time I go out. If you want this one for yourself, then head over to the suspected crime activity in West Wing Estate here, and take out Anton Kolev, or we'll drop the crafting spec. Yes, this again is a gun that must be crafted. Sorry. Here we are finally at number one. Now, if you remember back to the start of the video, I said Prejudice would have been top of this list if we could properly acquire it for most of the game. Well, this is the next best thing. Mazamune is the base version of Prejudice, and being a base gun can potentially come with random bonuses of its own, so bear that in mind. You can either buy the legendary gun from the weapon vendor in Vista del Rey, or the legendary crafting spec from downtown. Again, this gun can also have legendary variants spawn randomly in the world, so bear that in mind before splashing your hard-earned eddies. In addition to being the base version of Prejudice, this gun is also the sequel to Arasaka's Nawaki, which we placed at number 7. It fires the same triple burst, again great for accuracy and Sand Everstons alike. What's more, chucking a silencer on this one is also great for espionage, working just as well as the Moron Labe. Only use that attachment when you really need to though, as ricochet with this thing is simply something else. In the end, I resorted to mostly ricocheting my shots with this gun, because A, it felt cooler, and B, I actually inflicted way more damage doing it this way. It's definitely a steep learning curve though, and I will absolutely need more practice before attempting my ricochet only build. One helpful thing I've learned already though is that enemies will light up green when a ricochet shot is primed to hit them. Fire then and you're all good. If we look at the description for this gun, we can see it described as a work of art. Going in having read this, I thought of that sentence as a pretentious load of arty bollocks, but you know what, I see it now. This thing feels like a work of art, in the way that it gracefully fires three shots at a time with such excellent precision. 
It's just a shame that it can't pierce walls like Prejudice can, but with its beautiful combination of power, speed and artfulness, as well as, you know, the fact we can actually keep it and use it all the time, I think Mazamune has definitely earned its place at the top of my list. What do you think? Let me know in the comments your favourite assault rifle in Cyberpunk 2077 and why. I hope this video helped you out in learning which assault rifle is best for you. If it did, be sure to leave a like on this video and share it with your Cyberpunk friends. Finally, if you haven't already, then do hit that subscribe button and the bell, since I've got tons more cyberpunk content on the channel with plenty more on the way. Thank you very much for watching this one. I'm Sam Brown, and I'll see you very soon in another video.